Hey everyone, Karan here from Life Accounting, where we help you save on taxes and build your wealth. And today I'm gonna to give you the top 10 tax write-offs for single member LLCs, period. These are the biggest tax write-offs you can take no matter the size of your business or how long you've been in business. Let's jump right into it. First, we have startup and organizational costs. By taking this write-off, you can deduct up to $5,000 in startup costs and up to $5,000 in organizational costs. Your startup costs are gonna include all costs incurred to research the creation of a business or actually create the business. These include costs such as market research and surveys, product research, money spent searching for a facility or an office, advertising costs, website creation and hosting costs, salaries and wages for training employees, and travel costs or other necessary costs to secure distributors, suppliers, or customers. Now, on the other hand, organizational costs are the cost to form your LLC. They include expenses such as the cost to incorporate, legal fees, and accounting fees. Now, I want you to know that there is a limit to this write-off. If your single member LLC has startup costs that are more than $50,000, your allowable deduction will be reduced dollar for dollar after $50,000. And if you spend $55,000 or more, the deduction will disappear completely. If you have any remaining costs after your deduction or write-off, you must amortize it over the next 15 years. All right, number two, office expenses and technology. Any cost related to your office or technology for business use can be written off. And typical office expenses include things like furniture, laptops, power strips, filing cabinets, printers, folders, and more. Now, examples of technology may include your CRM, Google Suite, social media scheduling tools, hosting for your website, and more. If it is necessary in an ordinary tool or technology to run your business, you should write it off. Single member LLC write-off number three, business meals. So thanks to the Consolidated Appropriations Act that went into effect on December 27, 2020, you can deduct all of your business-related meals eaten at restaurants in 2021 and 2022. And you can deduct 50% of a business related meal if it was not purchased at a restaurant. Now, you'll notice that I'm still focusing on meals consumed in the course of business. You can't write off personal meals no matter how tempting it is. But meals with a client, meals while traveling for business, meals provided for a company meeting, and treating your employees to a meal are all examples of business-related meal expenses. All right, write-off number four, business travel. All expenses incurred as a result of business travel are deductible. This includes the cost of your ticket, hotel, rental car or Uber, dry cleaning and tips, among other things. And if your business travel becomes a vacation, you can only deduct a portion of the trip that was spent on business. Your trip must meet the following three criteria to be considered business travel. First, the trip must be required for your company's operations. Two, the trip must take place in a city other than your place of business. And third, you must travel for longer than a typical workday and you must stay overnight. Single member LLC write-off number five, the home office deduction. In the United States, more than half of all businesses are now run from home. And the good news is that you can deduct expenses related to the business use of your home if you use a portion of your home exclusively for business. This home office deduction is available to both renters and homeowners. And common home office deductions and write-offs you can claim for your business include utilities, such as your internet and electricity, HOA fees, mortgage insurance and interest, homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. But to claim the deduction, you have two choices, the regular method or the simplified method. Now, the regular method requires you to calculate the percentage of your home that you use for business. So for example, if your home is 2000 square feet and you use 400 square feet for your office, you can write off 20% of your home expenses. Now, with the simplified method, you can take a standard deduction of $5 per square foot of office, 
up to 300 square feet. I say if you want to skip the calculations, the simplified method may be easier, but choose the method that will give you the biggest write-off. Okay, write-off number six, phone expenses. Any phone that is used for business purposes can be deducted from your taxes. Yes, you can write off the cost of the phone as well as the cost of your phone plan. There's no need to be concerned if you use your phone for both personal and professional purposes. Because once again, you're gonna calculate your allowable write-off by multiplying the percentage of your phone usage that is dedicated to your business by your overall phone expenses. Write-off number seven, business interest and bank fees. There's a good chance you'll have to pay interest if you take out a loan or credit for your business. Fortunately, you can deduct interest on both business loans and credit cards for your business. In addition, any bank fees and charges are also tax deductible. So those pesky monthly account fees, annual credit card fees, and late fees are all write-offs for single member LLCs. All right, write-off number eight, vehicles used for business. If you use your car for business, you may be able to deduct expenses related to the vehicle. There are two ways to deduct vehicle expenses, and you should choose the method that will give you the biggest deduction. The first option is to use the standard mileage rate, also called the SMR. When you use the standard mileage rate, you multiply your mileage driven by the current year's SMR. And for 2021, that was 56 cents. So in 2021, if you drove a thousand miles for business, you will multiply that by 56 cents for a total deduction or write-off of $560. Now, the second method is to use the actual expense method. And when you use the actual expense method, you keep track of all of your expenses, like gas, insurance, and repairs, and then multiply that by your mileage percentage that you use for business. So if you have $5,000 in vehicle expenses and use your car for business 20% of the time, you will multiply $5,000 by 20% to get a $1,000 write-off. You're gonna wanna keep detailed records of your miles driven and your business use regardless of the method that you choose. All right, write off number nine, legal and professional services. Any legal or professional services that are required to operate your business can be a write off. This is gonna include legal fees, accounting fees, coaching fees, and consulting fees as an example. Now, depending on your industry, professional services will vary. For example, a cleaning service for those with rentals or Airbnb businesses is an example of a deductible professional service. But if your legal fees cover both personal and business expenses, be sure to deduct only the portion of your legal fees that is related to your business. Write-off number 10, salaries and benefits. If your employees meet the following criteria, you can generally deduct their salaries and benefits. First, the employer is not a member of the LLC. So don't worry about that, you're a single member LLC. Number two, the wage is reasonable, customary, and necessary. And lastly, during the pay period, the employee actually accrues time. All right, I know I said I was only gonna give you 10, but here's a bonus write-off for you. Work clothes. You may be able to deduct clothing that is necessary and routine for the operation of your business. I'm not gonna lie though, clothing can be difficult to deduct or write off, but a good rule of thumb is that if the uniform or clothing can be worn outside of work, it's probably not deductible. This means that even if you wear a suit only to work, you can't write it off because you can also wear a suit outside of work and that be normal. But protective clothing, like safety boots or masks, uniforms with your company logo, and costumes are all examples of clothing that can be considered a tax deduction. But here's a cool tip for you when it comes to clothing. If you go ahead and add your company logo to a clothing item, then that will be considered deductible. Now, I'm going to place a few videos on the screen I think you should watch next. Be sure to check them out. And if this video helped you today, please hit the like button for me and leave me a comment. It helps the channel out greatly. And then subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on future content that can help grow your business. I'm Karan from Life Accounting, and I'll see you in the next video.